Well, what a blessing to come and to share the Word of God with you. Uh, we are in week two of a brand new series called uh, In Secret. And this series is found in Matthew chapter, comes out of Matthew chapter six, where Jesus gives a couple of when you statements. And last week we uh, did this sermon called When You Pray. And this series is leading us up to our Vision Sunday, which is also gonna be our Anointing Sunday. And uh, we're on a wee journey. We started 21 days of prayer last week. So if you missed out on starting that, that's okay. We've got 14 days left. We'd love for you to get on the journey. And if you have been starting 21 days of prayer, <clears throat> I'll encourage you just to continue on with that rhythm. If you would like it, you can download the 21 day devotional booklet from our website, or we're gonna have some printed copies at the info booth as well. So you're free to go and and grab those after the service. Uh, but today we're going a whole nother layer. Last week when you pray, today when you fast. Matthew chapter six, verse 16. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they just figure their faces uh, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When I was about 12 years old, I got really interested in triathlon. So triathlon had sort of just come into the Olympics and athletes like Hamish Carter and stuff were like leading the way in New Zealand with it. And I got really into triathlon. I, I loved watching it. And um, I signed up for my first triathlon and, and I was 12 years old. And bear in mind at 12 years old, I had the physical stature of this mic stand. <laughs> I signed up for this triathlon and on the day of the race, it was a Sunday, on the day of the race, I showed up and there was registration. And at registration, they gave you a race number. And, and what they did was they got a, a permanent marker and they wrote your race number on your shoulder and on your leg, just like the pros. And I was like, I've made it. I am a triathlete. I was so proud. Like, it was, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm, it's just like, the pros, I am now an, an athlete and I did this triathlon and, and, and uh, I came home later that day, had a shower and I noticed that my race number had faded. And so as a 12 year old kid, I went and found a Vivid and I redid my race number because I had school the next day and I wanted everyone to know that I was a triathlete. I wanted to walk around school and have people go, oh, what's that? What's that on your shoulder? Oh, this, this is my race number. This you get when you race in a, tri I don't know if you heard, but I did a triathlon yesterday. <laughs> oh, this thing on my leg, this number, it's, it's what athletes get given when they do races. And I, I, I tell you church, I, I redid that number every day for a week. And my mum was going, that looks really fresh. I'm like, oh, it's just a really good marker that they used, mum. It was, um, you know, in this passage in, uh, in Matthew, Jesus is talking to people and he's, he's pointing out an issue of the heart with the people he's talking to. He's saying to them that, that they had taken something that was a personal spiritual discipline between them and God and made it all about public recognition. It's like they, they walk around, and with forlorn faces and disheveled and unkept. And so that people around them would be like, oh, what's going on? They're like, I'm fasting. <laughs> oh, you're fasting. Wow. How spiritual are you? How amazing are you that you are fasting? Oh, this, this scruffy look, it's just because I'm, I'm fasting. And, and Jesus says that if that's what you're doing, that applause you get from those people, that's it. That's the reward, that's all you got. That wow, or that wow, you're so spiritual, aren't you? That's it, that's all you're gonna get. But he says, but if you take that spiritual discipline and you just bring it to a secret place where it's actually just about you and God, there's a reward there that God has for you that you will not get 
if you're doing it just publicly. See, fasting is this really interesting practice. It's this interesting spiritual discipline. And we don't talk a lot about it in church. In fact, in in 20 years of ministry, this is the first message on fasting I've ever done. So welcome. If it's not good, I'll have another go in about four years. I'll recycle it. Fasting, it's a voluntary restriction of food for a set period of time. And you find the practice of fasting right throughout the Bible, Old Testament to New. Abraham's servant fasted when he was seeking a bride for Isaac. Moses fasted on several occasions, including when God gave him the Ten Commandments. Hannah fasted and prayed desperately for a child. David fasted on several occasions. Ezra fasted when mourning Israel's faithlessness. Nehemiah fasted when he was preparing to travel back to the destroyed city of Jerusalem. Esther fasted when God's people were threatened with extermination. Daniel fasted on numerous occasions, including 21 days when he was desperate to hear from God. The people of Nineveh fasted. Jesus fasted for 40 days before he began public ministry. Paul fasted at the point of his conversion. The Christians at Antioch fasted when they sent Paul and Barnabas on their mission endeavors. And Paul and others fasted Uh, and when they appointed elders in all of the churches that they set up. Fasting is right throughout Scripture. And I'll be honest with you, when I read the words of Jesus where He said, when you fast, I thought, no, I'd prefer an if. I'd prefer an if you fast. In fact, I read it, I thought, maybe there's a typo. Maybe they missed an E. When you feast. I think there's, (laughs) there's an E missing in that word. I much prefer that. When you feast, amen, Lord, you have my heart. But if this is, I don't know where you are on the journey. Like, I don't know where you are in your walk with the Lord. And I don't know where fasting sits in the realm of your spiritual disciplines. Maybe some of you here today, you are seasoned fasters. Like you are, it's just part of your practice. It's part of your routine, your rhythm. And it's something you've done many times. But maybe some of you here say, this is the first time you're even hearing that fasting is a part of this practice of faith. And uh, I, what I wanna do this morning is I wanna share just a few thoughts on, on fasting. And I want to, I wanna share these not as an exhaustive list of everything you need to know about fasting. There's so much to it. But I wanna share these thoughts. So I pray they encourage you. And I, and I, and I hope that we begin to ask the question, what might God be asking me to give up? What might God be asking me to give up? And, and no matter where you are on the journey, I pray this encourages you, I pray it helps you, I pray it helps you to give you some understanding and some clarity, but I hope it helps you in your walk with the Lord. As Jesus said, when you fast, do it in secret between you and the Lord. Here's my first thought. Are you guys ready this morning? Here's my first thought. Fasting disconnects us. One of the challenges of modern parenting is knowing how much device time is appropriate. Any parents out there, you know what I'm talking about? How much screen time and device time is appropriate? Now, some screen time is for our children's entertainment. Other screen time is for my sanity. Amen. (laughs) That was a loud amen from a lady here. Oh, sister, we blessed you. It's like, leave me, go watch something. Leave me alone. Get out of my hair. Don't have any hair. And that's why, because you're just in my hair all the time. It's figuring out how much device time is appropriate. And, and so we've just come off summer school holidays and we've got two boys and, and, um, and it was, it's been a beautiful, long, hot summer. But, but I noticed that both my children were spending a lot of time on devices and on screens. Like there was a lot, of, a lot of device time, a lot of screen time. And I'm looking out, this one day I woke up and, and, and got about my day and I looked out and it's a beautiful day. It's a sunny day. The sun is shining. The weather is amazing. It's wonderful outside. And here are my children in a room, windows shut, curtains pulled on a device at 1 p.m. And I was like, that's it, I'm done. And I march upstairs, I'm like, that's it, no more devices, no more. Disconnect, we're, we're, we're done. And it was that point I realized I'd become my mother. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> get up, you're wasting the day. Oh, mom, what are you doing? And I'm like, boys, you, that's it, no more device time. No more screens for the day. You've got to disconnect from the stuff and, 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 and find something else to do. Well, they sat there for about an hour and a half just blankly looking at a wall. 
I'm like, what's wrong? They're like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> well, you don't know what to do. Do something. Like, what? I don't know. Go find a stick. I don't like. <laughs> like what? What did we do? It's like go outside and smell the dirt. I don't know. Like climb a tree, throw a rock. I don't know. Like use your. Like the, the problem is you've been so connected, you've lost the ability to imagine. You've been so connected into that little world on that screen that you've missed this world. You've missed the opportunity that might be available to you in the world that's around you. See, the same way fasting is a deliberate disconnect in order to reconnect. It's what it is. It's a deliberate disconnect in order to reconnect. We can be so consumed by our appetites and the things that drive us and that take our focus and take our attention. And what fasting does is it disconnects us from the physical in order to stir us to grow in the spiritual. It's a disconnect from this kingdom in order to grow in God's kingdom. See, the culture of this world is all about self-satisfaction. Do what pleases you, do what you like, do what makes you happy, whatever appetite you have, whatever hunger you have, go satisfy it, go fulfill it. But the culture of the kingdom is not self-satisfaction, it's self-denial. Deny yourself and take up your cross. And so fasting is a practical practice where we just deny ourselves a bit. That the hunger we have and the appetites we have for the things that sustain us Physically, we say, I'm going to humble myself and put that aside with a desire to seek God in greater measure and in a deeper way. Fasting is a disconnecting practice where we remove something of this world that sustains us to go after the one who truly satisfies and sustains. It's an intentional disconnect. And Jesus said, when you do that and you do it just between you and God, there's a reward There's a blessing to be found when we step into that space. That's my first thought. The second one is this. Fasting brings focus. I'll ask the question again. What might God be asking you to give up? Fasting brings focus. I shared last week that my wife is convinced that I have a mild form of ADD. And as I get older, it's getting less mild. So it's a miracle, like I struggle to focus on a good day. So it's a miracle that I earned myself a university degree. Like it really is a miracle. It's just so hard for me to focus. Now, my whole university degree was earned via doing every assignment and every study time for an exam four hours before it was due. That's my whole university degree. There's some of you shaking your heads like, how, how dare you? Listen. Here, let me tell you why. Like, I, I'm so distracted and I find it so hard to focus that if I have a month out from that assignment being due, I've got plenty of other things to do. Like, I've got lots of options. I have no focus. But however, if you put me four hours before a due date, I am Superman. <laughs> you remove time from the equation, You take that away, I have got focus like you would not believe. Keep in mind that when I went through uni, it was the early 2000s, and it was the era of the latte bowl. Do you guys remember the latte bowl? It's like coffee started coming out in New Zealand, and now they got small. Back then, it was like a bucket. It's like a giant bucket of latte. Give me a latte bowl in four hours, and I will get that thing done, baby. (laughs) You remove something, and now I've got a bit more focus. It's like when my wife tries to speak to me while I'm watching the rugby, it's like I have no concept what she's saying. In fact, there's been times in our relationship where I've actually turned the volume up because I think there's a background noise that is, that is, that is, what is it? So, so, so relationally there's a disconnect going on and but what I need is like, if, if you want me to focus there, I've got to get rid of that. Like that has to stop if you want me to, to focus in. It's often when you remove something, you're able to focus on the right things a little better. And, and fasting is a season of time, a period of time. It's not forever. It's just a period of time where you intentionally remove something in order to focus a little more intention 
into your walk with God, into the prayers you're praying, into whatever you're seeking God for. The amount of times I think to myself, man, I, I, wish, I, I wish I had more time to pray more. I wish I, like, man, I, I really should connect with God better. I really should have more, but I've just got so much going on. I've got so many things I've got to do. You know what that makes me? It makes me a great candidate for a fast. Because what fasting does is it removes something and creates space. And so now in the space where I would have eaten food, had breakfast, had my lunch, prepared a meal, scrolled my social media, watched the TV, now I have a window to focus. Now I have a space where I seek God in a deeper way, in a more intentional way. I now have focus. What I found is this, whenever I have fasted and whenever I do fast, what I discover is that feeling of hunger doesn't point me to the fridge anymore, it points me to God. Like when I'm intentionally fasting because I wanna seek God in a, great, in, a, in, a, in a deeper way, when I feel that sense of hunger, it just points me to the Lord. God, I just, I'm hungry, but the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna seek you. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna pray. By removing that thing, it brings a level of focus that I did not have before. And often you see fasting in scripture done in response to a need or an event. So there was a specific need, and so we're gonna go into prayer and fasting for that thing. One such event, which I shared earlier, was the commissioning of Paul and Barnabas to go and plant churches and strengthen the church around uh, the region that they were going to. And before they prayed for them and sent them out, the, 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 the leaders of the church had a season of fasting. They fasted and prayed, and then they sent them out. They're like, we're gonna take away something because we're gonna intentionally seek God in a greater way with greater focus for the thing that we're asking these guys to do. And what's really cool is that in two weeks time, we're gonna be praying and commissioning every single one of you. On Vision Sunday, we're gonna have our anointing Sunday and we're gonna pray for and anoint with oil every one of you. So for the next two weeks, we're having a little season of fasting in preparation for what God is gonna do in your life life. So I want to extend that challenge again. What might God be asking you to give up for the next 14 days? What might God be stirring in your heart to lay down or to create space with over the next 14 days? Maybe it's one meal a week. Maybe the next two weeks you just take one meal and the next two weeks I'm going to fast that meal and pray. Great, it's one step towards intentionality and one step towards a bit more focus and disconnect. Maybe it's a day a week. Maybe it's uh, a couple of days along the way. Maybe it's a particular type of fast. There's many different fasts in the Bible. I encourage you to go research and look them up. You can do the Daniel fast, which is just fruit and vegetables for, like he did that for 21 days, there's 14 days. Maybe you could do that. Maybe. Uh, the, the thing that God would be asking you to give up, like in the Bible, it's always food. It's always food. Like it's, it's never not food. It's always food. However, in our modern society, maybe there's something else that you've become a, a bit too hungry for that God's asking you to give up. Maybe it's social media. Maybe God's like, hey, that, that, you know when you get your weekly screen time or your daily screen time report and you feel really judged by your phone? You, your, your screen time has increased by 20%. Oh gosh. Maybe it's that time you're spending scrolling your phone. Maybe it's time to fast that for, a se for the next 14 days and go, the time that I would be doing that, I'm gonna pray. Maybe it's technology, maybe it's television. I, I don't know what it is, but I wanna challenge every single person here to say, over the next 14 days, what am I going to give up? Maybe you're a seasoned faster and you're already in it. I know a bunch of people in the church who've already started you know, a fast for, the, for the, these whole 21 days. But I wanna extend an a, a challenge and an invitation to you if you are, if, if this is the first time you've ever started to step into this space, to begin to say, God, what is it that you'd have me give up for the next 14 days? Keys, you guys can join me uh, now. That would be absolutely amazing. Here's the thing. Whatever you give up, use that space to seek God. So, oh man, I'm, I'm not gonna eat this day. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up food for this day and just intentionally seek God. Okay, cool. In all your meal prep times, 
and all your meal eating times, that's a time to seek God. That's a time to seek God. It's another layer of intentionality. And use the hunger that you feel for whatever that thing is you're giving up. You know the feeling you're like, oh man, I just really wanna sit down and watch TV, but I'm fasting TV. Great, use that hunger to point you to God. I was sitting there at my computer, tummy grumbling. Okay, Lord, that's my reminder. I'm just gonna pray. I'm just gonna seek you. Maybe there's some specific things in your world that you just need God to show up in. Maybe there's some specific needs or breakthroughs that you're looking for. I wanna encourage you. Like prayer, like fasting is not like the, 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 the lottery ticket. You're like, okay, if I do this, then I'll get it. No, no, no. Like we, we heard last week, it's His kingdom, His glory. So He's responsible for the outcome. But fasting is about creating the space and the intentionality and the focus to seek God in a greater measure. And, and Jesus said, if you do it, there's reward, there's blessing that comes out of it. And I know it, it can be a bit of an odd topic. It, can, it doesn't, for some of us here today, it's like, oh, this is quite abstract. I've never really thought about this and never really done it. I just wanna encourage you to have a go. That's what I wanna encourage you to do. Over the next 14 days, God, what would you have me give up? And leverage that space to focus and seek Him in a new way. Is that cool? Can we pray? Let's pray. I read this quote and I thought it was amazing. Prayer is going after the unseen. Fasting is letting go of what is seen. Father, I, I just pray that over the next little season that you would build into our rhythm and into our hearts a desire just to know you better, a desire to seek you in a greater measure. God, if there's things that are taking up too much space, if we have a hunger for something that you're asking us to lay down, God, give us the discipline, give us the courage to step into that. And God, I pray over the next 14 days, as we pray, as we seek you, as we disconnect and bring focus, God, that you would meet us in that space in radical ways. I pray that each person here, their, their walk with you would grow. I pray that they would hear your voice. I pray that they would see your response and how you are moving in their life in ways they never thought possible. God, I just pray, help us to step into a spiritual discipline where we just deny ourselves a little bit to know you in a greater way. God, as we walk this next 14 days, just bless every person as we take that step. And I pray right now you just highlight to each of us what it is you're asking us to give up. You know, friends, I just while every eyes still closed and every head bowed, I know I've essentially talked about not eating food. <laughs> but I, in all, with all my heart, I, I know that there's some people here today and from the minute you walked in these doors, God's been speaking to you. I know there's some people here today that came here because you're like, man, I just need to, I just saw my life out. I'm, I'm far from God and I just, God has drawn you to this place. And maybe there's some of you here today and your life is not right with God. The truth is friends, God loves you, God made you, God's got a great plan for your life. We all sin, we all fall short of God's standard and our sin, it separates us from God. And the payment due for our sin is death. But God in His grace sent His own Son, Jesus, to a cross. When He died on that cross, He paid the debt that you and I would do for our sin. And then He conquered death in the grave and He rose again to new life. And He extends to every single person His free gift of grace. Forgiveness for your past. A new life that begins right here, right now. You get to walk into the plans that God has for you. And then there's this great promise of eternity in heaven with Him. And if you're here today and your life is not right with God, but you're here and you're like, Steve, I wanna get right right now. 
I need forgiveness. I need the grace of God and I wanna walk into the life he's got for me. Then friends, I wanna invite you to pray a simple prayer with me. I'll pray this out loud. You pray it with me in your heart. Are you ready to say these words? Say, God, today I surrender my life to you. I know I've sinned, but I believe Jesus, you died for me. So right now, I turn from my old way and I turn to you. I ask you to come in and be the Lord of my life. I choose from this day to follow you in Jesus' name. Just with your eyes still closed and every head bowed, if you pray that prayer, I want you to do something really brave for me. What I'm gonna do is count to three. When I get to three, if you pray that prayer and you got your life right with God today, I want you to put your hand up nice and high so I can see it. I'm not gonna stand you up. I'm not gonna call you out. All I'll do is I'll see you, I'll acknowledge you. You can put your hand straight back down. Let's take a little step of faith today. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Hands going up nice and high right now. Saying, Steve, that's me. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. So, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Amazing. Amazing. You know, I'm saying, Steve, online there's a button that's coming up. You can push that button. It says, I raise my hand. If you're getting your life right with God today, this is your day. This is your moment. Just say yes to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we just bless each person that's just said yes to you. We thank you, God, for the amazing grace of God. Lord, that you love them, that you've called them, and that right now, right here, their lives are turned around and never the same again. Thank you for your amazing gift of grace. We bless each one, and we thank you for calling them home.